A foil chest is a segment of broken ribs. A pneumothorax is a collapsed lung. Let's explain this. Now, the biggest thing to remember with a flail chest is you're going to see this paradoxical movement. What does that mean? Well, normally the chest rise and fall is equal. It is unequal. It is abnormal with a flail chest. Now, here we go. Blood trauma. So, when we think of versus each other, most commonly blunt trauma causes a foil chest where blunt or penetrating is tension with thorax. Talk about that later on. Stay for that. Now, here's the definition. It is two or more contiguous. Contiguous means next to. So two or more contiguous rib fractures. So we have two or more ribs that are right next to each other that are fractured in two or more places. Two or more break points on those ribs. That's what a flail chest is. You may hear it's a flail segment, a segment that is very painful, that causes severe chest pain. Now, this is why this emergency is so sinister. Hear me out here. The chest pain is so severe in your patient that it hurts to breathe because you have those broken segments of the rib. So your patient starts to breathe more shallow. When this happens, we have shallow breathing, but the body, we have a tachycardia, high heart rate, and we have increased respirations, but we're breathing not deep, we're breathing shallow. So we're not getting the oxygen that we need. We're not ventilating like we're, we need to. And the patient has a respiratory emergency. So what's the treatment here? Well, for an EMT, we're gonna give oxygen, right? Do our vitals, do our assessments, give oxygen, and then we're gonna ventilate our patient. Obviously, the SPO2 will be the judge how much oxygen to give, getting them back to normal oxygen. Now, ALS, pain management, why? Why? Well, yes, because they're in pain, but hear me out. They're breathing shallow because they're in so much pain. If we can get them out of that chest pain, they will breathe on their own better. And this is what paramedics use to treat a tension pneumothorax. More on that later. A pneumothorax is a collapsing lung. A tension pneumothorax, that's a collapsing lung with low blood pressure, with hypotension. Let's say a bullet enters my chest on the right side. My right lung is affected. What's gonna happen is his right lung is a collapse because it got pierced by a bullet. Air starts to accumulate, gets released, and I have to put pressure on my lung. It's not in the lungs anymore, it got pierced. So the air pressure builds up in my chest, builds up, builds up, builds up. And what's gonna happen over time is eventually other structures inside your chest are gonna get pressed by that pressure. That includes the heart, and the heart can start to fail as a pump. This makes tension pneumothorax a type of obstructive shock. Now hear me out here, we have a few things to talk about. With tension pneumothorax, it can be caused by blunt or penetrating trauma. I gave you an example of penetrating, but you can also be in a motor vehicle accident or a fall victim, and let's say you hit the steering wheel really hard with your chest, for example. That can cause pneumothorax. Remember, the tension word matches up with the hypotension. Pretty cool? Okay, now, moving on a few more players. The main sign and symptoms of tension pneumothorax are gonna be severe chest pain, difficulty breathing, increased respirations, right? So with that difficulty breathing, and we're gonna have an increase in the heart rate as well. The other thing you wanna look out for is obviously hypoxia, so your SpO2 is going to be low. JVD, anytime the heart fails the pump, we get JVD here in the neck, could be either side of course. And then we also have trachea deviation. So if I have a bullet enter on this side and pressure moves over, trachea deviates where the pressure is pushing. Trachea deviation is a late, late sign. Now talking about lung sounds, I'm gonna hear absent or diminished lung sounds, depending how bad it is, on one side. So if the bullet enters on this side, this will be the side I hear absent or diminished lung sounds. Obviously absent being much worse, but this is gonna be big, these signs and symptoms, for your test question. Now down here, EMT level, we're gonna give oxygen, we're gonna ventilate as needed, 
with the respirations. And ALS, we're gonna do needle decompression. That's the thing I showed you earlier. Let's talk about that. What we have with a pneumothorax is we have all this pressure being built up and collapsing the lung. We gotta let that air escape. The way we do that is by placing a needle into what we call the pearl space. That's the space around the lung that's collapsing it. So we take the top off here. You can see here, I'll just gonna show you what it looks like. So here's our needle here. And I'm gonna put a video uh, right here. You can see the actual procedure of it. And I'm gonna put another little graph right here showing you the exact spot, the exact location where you wanna place this needle. We knocked out flail chest and tension pneumothorax. If you wanna learn even more and really get this stuff down cold, maybe you're getting ready for school, you're in school right now, or getting ready for your national registry prep, down below, first link in the description, this is what I give to all of my students. You get lifetime access, over 420 videos of all my content for all that prep, and you also get access to our community group to ask me questions personally while you are studying for your exam. My friends, I will see you in the next video. Take care.